we're going to create the simplest pop-up lab consisting of two load balance web servers and we're going to go through seven steps. One, create the VMs. Two, install IIS. Three, set up the endpoints to the load balancer. Four, show a lab shutdown. Five, delete the VMs off the Azure hypervisor to avoid charges. Six, show how to reboot from the saved disks. And seven, reconnect the endpoints to the load balancer and with the last two steps we'll have recreated the pop-up lab. The last two steps will usually take less than 10 minutes meaning any time you want to pop up this particular lab it should be ready inside 10 minutes. We're going to create two VMs called IIS1 and IIS2 and then install IIS onto them. Select virtual machines from the left hand pane of the portal and click the New button at the bottom of the screen. In the first column, select Compute. In the second column, select Virtual Machine. And in the third column, select From Gallery. Now select Windows Server 2012 Data Center and click the right arrow. On this page, fill out the virtual machine name and create a username for the administrator account. As you'll see here, you can't use Admin or Administrator as the account name. Next, set a password. In this case, we'll select a VM size of small, which gives a single core and 1.75 gigs of RAM. Click the right arrow. On this page, because this is the first of two VMs, select Standalone Virtual Machine and then provide a DNS name. This will be the name of the load balance service, which in this case will consist of two IIS machines so avoid giving it the name of a specific server. In this case we go for IIS-LB meaning IIS load balanced. For storage account you can have the portal automatically generate a storage account for you and this is the best option if you're new to Windows Azure. In the region slash affinity slash virtual network box select an entry from the region section. A region means a data center. Choose the one closest to you, then click the right arrow. On the last page, don't worry about an availability set and click the tick button. You may get a few panes popping up showing the progress of various options you've selected. You can dismiss them if they show success. In the portal, you can see the VM going through the starting brackets provisioning process. While this VM is provisioning, you can start creation of the second VM. I'm using the magic of video editing to compress time in this video so things will happen much more quickly than they do in real life. You now go through the same steps for the next VM. Obviously you need to supply a different machine name and then you get to an interesting text box. Select connect to an existing virtual machine this time. Last time you selected standalone virtual machine but that was because it was the first VM for this pair. The phraseology here can give the impression that the VM you are currently creating is going to connect to the previous machine for some reason. In fact, it means you can put this new VM you are creating into the same network segment and service as the previous one. Now, The reason for doing this is because the two VMs will now share the same network and load balancer, meaning you'll be able to load balance traffic across the two servers you're creating. It's possible that you cannot select anything from the text box. It just means the provisioning of your other server hasn't progressed far enough yet. Wait a couple of minutes and then check back again. In the text box, select the first server you created. Notice how it gives the DNS name that will be exposed to the public internet in brackets. This is the important thing. It means both servers will be sharing the same DNS name when fully deployed. Use the same storage account and data center as you did before, then click the right arrow. Again, don't worry about availability sets at this stage and click the tick button. You can also dismiss the progress messages. Eventually, the servers will go into the running state. Bear in mind, the magic of video editing is at large in this video. Select the first server and click the connect button at the bottom of the page. A good practice is to save the RDP file to your desktop and set a few default properties. That way you can use terminal services to get into the server from your desktop. Set the screen resolution. 
In this case, I'm using 720 by 1280, but that's just because I'm making an HD video. Also, on the Advanced tab, you can select Connect and Don't Warn Me to avoid having to go through multiple clicks every time you connect to the server. Then click Save and then Connect. Use the credentials you created earlier to log in. The Server Manager dashboard should fire up by default. Here you can click Add Roles and Features. Keep clicking Next until you get to the Roles page, then be sure to select Application Server and Web Server, then follow along clicking Next and Add Features all the way through to the end. Notice how the IIS node appears in the left-hand pane of the dashboard when IIS has been successfully installed. Now set up the connection to the load balancer. We're going to connect port 80 on the server's internal network up to the Windows Azure load balancer and map it to port 80 on the connection that's attached to the internet. Back in the portal, click the right arrow next to the first server, IIS1 in this case. On the main page, click Endpoints, then Add Endpoint. On this screen, click Add Endpoint and then click the right arrow. Then give it a name, such as HTTP. Leave the protocol at TCP and ensure both the public, which is the internet connected port, and the private, which is the internal Azure network, are set to port 80. Then click the tick button. When you get back to the main page, you'll probably see the server in the updating state. On the end of the line is a copy button, which allows you to copy the URL into the paste buffer. You can then open up a new tab and use it to go to the URL. In this case, it's http colon slash slash iis-lb.cloudapp.net. You should see the default IIS 8 web page. Now, go back to the remote desktop connection and drill into the www root folder on the server's hard drive. You can see all the content that creates the default web page. Right click iis.png and select edit. This is the default image. Modify the image to indicate this is from the first server. In this case, I'm adding the text IIS1 in black text. Now just save the picture. You can recheck that the new image is delivered by going to the same URL. Now concentrate on the second server. Select it and click connect. Save the RDP file and make the modifications that make life easier as you did before. Use the RDP client to log into the second server. Go through the same routine to install IIS onto the second server. Note in this video I make a mistake by adding the text IIS1 to this second server which should be IIS2. I do however add it in red text so it's easy to tell the difference. Again, go through the process of adding another endpoint but on this screen select load balance traffic on an existing endpoint then click the right arrow and make sure the private port is set to 80. At this point we have the IIS servers connected to the load balancer over port 80. The public connection to the internet is also on port 80. The result is that traffic will be load balanced across the servers. On the main VMs page copy the URL from the end of the line into the paste buffer and as before, open up a new tab and paste it into the address bar. When the page loads, use Control F5 to cause hard reloads from the load balanced IIS servers you've now created. You'll notice the image you modified being delivered, sometimes from server 1 and sometimes from server 2. There isn't strict round robin load balancing, the algorithm is more complicated than that, but if you keep refreshing with Control F5, you'll see the load is spread across both servers. Remember that my error was to type IIS1 into both files, but at least I changed the color of one of them, and you can see this. In the Windows Azure Data Center, your servers are running on special Windows Azure hypervisor hosts. The disks themselves are persisted into blob storage between reboots. Simply shutting down the VMs doesn't stop the charging, because they're still taking up a deployment slot on a hypervisor host. To avoid the compute charges for non-running servers, you need to delete them off the hypervisor hosts. It's important to note that the state of the machines is still preserved in blob storage. You do pay a small price for each gigabyte of data, 
So say if each disk was 130 gigabytes, you'd pay 130 gigabytes times 4.46 pence at current pricing per gigabyte, which comes to £5.80 per month. Or, if you're particularly worried about the safety of your data, you can spread six copies of your data across two geographically dispersed data centres for £7.86 per month. To shut the VMs down, just go to the main page in the portal and click Shut Down. But remember, you're still racking up hourly compute charges because the VMs are still deployed to the hypervisor hosts. To delete them off the hosts but keep the .vhd files in blob storage, click Delete in the portal. We've now completed the first five steps and you have two VHDs in blob storage. Let's now reboot the lab from the saved disks and reconnect the servers up to the load balancer to pop up the lab again. This should take less than 10 minutes. Do the same thing as before to create a new VM. Only this time, when you get to the type of machine to install, click My Disks and select the disk you saved earlier. You need to provide a machine name again and select the size of the server you'll use. Again, because this is the first machine, specify a standalone virtual machine and provide a DNS name for the service. Again, try to avoid a specific machine name, as in this case, two machines will be load balanced across the DNS name. Select the closest region to your location. You may find, if you try to specify the previous DNS, DNS name you used, you get an error saying the name is already in use. Now this is because the container that holds the two servers hasn't been deleted. If you go to Cloud Services, you'll see it. It's just an empty service which you can delete. You then just create the VM using the disk as you attempted before. You can then build the second machine while the first one is provisioning. Be sure to select the second disk and connect to your existing machine. When both machines are in the running state, you can connect to the load balancer to them just by creating the HTTP endpoints as you did before. This is simply a case of doing what you did before. Connect the first endpoint up and then connect the second endpoint, but be sure to select load balance traffic on an existing endpoint and make sure you connect the right endpoint in the text box. The result is that both connections go to the load balancer and because the load balancer's external port is set to 80 and the internal ports are also set to 80, it load balances the traffic. Notice how, with the magic of video editing, I managed to change the machine name of the second machine name as I demonstrate load balancing here. But you've now booted a simple pop-up lab from saved disks. Let's quickly review what we've covered. One, we created the VMs. Two, we installed IIS onto the VMs. Three, we set up the endpoints to connect to the load balancer. Four, we shut down the VMs. 5. We deleted the VMs off the hypervisor to ensure we didn't rack up any charges. 6. We then rebooted from the disks which were saved in blob storage. And 7. We finally reconnected the load balancer. Because the last couple of steps took such a short time, we can perform them any time we need this very simple pop-up lab. One feature of this pop-up lab is the lack of automation. Everything is done manually using the portal but this is just an example of the simplest pop-up lab you could build. If you'd like to try this for yourself for free, you can get a free 90-day trial of Windows Azure at http colon slash slash aka.ms slash azure underscore trial. Also, my blog is at http colon slash slash aka.ms slash plankytronics with two X's. And you can get the latest free Windows Azure training kit at http colon slash slash aka dot ms slash w a t k.